you are in this really interesting location. Yeah. It's uh, the site of the first Royal Canal, also the second Royal Canal. Yeah. Um, having grown up in the Niagara region, I always knew that the Long Canal was built by, by immigrants, yeah. but it wasn't actually until the, these readings and hearing from you that um, there were mostly Irish immigrants that came here and did a lot of that labor. Yeah. That was really interesting. In fact, there was a lot of things that were um, new. I was actually quite baffled to, to find out that there was this great uh, difference between Irish Catholics and Irish Protestants. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's funny because we live in this modern secular liberal democracy, and, and I think many of us have forgotten some of those older animosities that were actually central to our society. And certainly the Protestant and Catholic, uh, but the Irish were very truly representatives of that in this country. We've seen it last week, the animosity between French and British, between Catholic and Protestant. But it was also, we also kind of confused that with line, but we also kind of confused that with, you know, with, with, with people that spoke French and people spoke English. I'm trying to emphasize that the screen cast uh, is really horrible religion in the language. Uh, and of course, the Irish therefore represent this whole lot of people who are arriving who are English speakers, you know, from the Catholic and Catholic countries. So they represent any kind of new kind of trend. Coming in in these great numbers, the 1830s, 1840s, um, and they'll, that, there's an increase with the potato famine once the potato famine begins. Millions of native Irish immigrants. It's a huge story. Uh, but even in the years before that, you've got several thousand coming in every year into the country. And they are, as Bentley points out in his article, changing the labor market. They are unskilled people in the settler economy, uh, where most settlers become farmers or some sort of thing. Most of these farmers some money doesn't have them to get that far along. These guys don't. These families have tend to have very, very little money at all. So they're poor and they're in. This is that, that, that combination makes them noticeable, makes them makes them attract to the community. I find it most surprising because the uh, our sense of alien now seems to be this uh, visual difference or some kind of uh, you know like you say language. There's something that's so obviously different right. and, and I it was hard for me to to imagine how much different this sort of process would be and why there would be any kind of, you know, they look like white Europeans, how could it be so different? It's the, the, the historic question of Irish uh, subjugation to, to Britishness and therefore Catholic subjugation to Britishness, it's a long and deep story. Uh, there's been 400 years of, of, of English slash British occupation of Ireland, several rebellions, several attempts to overthrow that, that, uh, that domination. So, it's, it's interesting now to look at this place. We're at a park. It's lovely. People are playing frisbee golf over here. It's November, and look, we're wearing short sleeves. It's this beautiful day. This is idyllic. But this was a place of intense competition between these groups, between the Irish workers, Irish, sorry, the Irish Catholic workers, and the Irish Protestant workers. Just up the, up the canal, away from here, where we shot the first part of this video, uh, there's an area called Slab Town. It's part of the modern day Meriton, which is now part of St. Catharines. Um, and Riots took place there. Small-scale wars took place there as these people struggled for a place in the labor market, for turf, literally for physical turf in the area, uh, but mostly to get those jobs, to secure those jobs. And for the desperately poor Irish Catholics in particular, who had no other connections in Ireland, uh, it was a life and death struggle in many ways. They needed those wages to have any kind of possible security uh, in this place of to get to get out of this country. That life and death struggle reminds me of like how you know similar it is today to newcomers coming yeah, here. You, yeah. know, you have Syrian refugees coming, you know, escaping, trying with their lives, and how they're coming here. And there's this sort of um, fear of the other, um, you know, because they think differently. Right? Yeah. Maybe they're going to be changing, you know, our, our landscape. That would seem confusing to me uh, to be feeling that way. There's uh, lots of political discussion in our society, in the United States in particular, right now, uh, over the threat people pose to us, to our way of life, to our way of being. Uh, and when you look at the discussions from the 19th century of the Irish in Canada, it's the exact same kind of thing. It's the exact same thing. Almost the exact same conversation. They are viewed as a threat to who we are. We are a Protestant British nation. These are papists. These are Catholics. These are people who will undermine who we are. They are a threat to our way of life. Uh, and, and, and again, I think, I think it's useful for us in the present day to say, yeah, and look what happened. I think we, I would like to say, say we can look at the Syrian situation and see 
that history does not repeat itself. We can't get into that kind of story. But it certainly suggests that maybe we're a little bit more concerned about this than we need to be. Right. Uh, if you look at the numbers, look at the numbers. A little, little later than this, about a half million Irish people were born in Canada. Uh, and at the time, the population of Canada was over 2 million. That's a big number of people in a small place. The number of Syrians in our country are not very small. Uh, so we try to do it in a different in a scale. So, it is, I think it is an interesting thing for us to think about, to, to compare the scales and to compare the ideas that are being expressed in those historical documents to see that what we're seeing now is not new, that, that these things have existed in the past, we've fought with them, we've struggled over them, we've debated them, we've come to terms with them in many ways, and we've moved on and we're doing fine. That was one of the things that really surprised me, actually, was reading this uh, history where, in my K-12 education, I feel like my, in history class, I was taught that we really embraced them. So this seems to be quite different. Um, but it made me think about the secondary sources. The, one, uh, the first one was from 1969. Right. Yep. And he's basically, he seems to have his own opinion about things. He's, he's supposed to be using historical thinking, but because he's of a time, it, it seems in itself a historical document. How do we approach that? Can, can we, can we put, situate that in the fact that maybe there's some, you know, antiquated thinking there? One, this is a colonial course, so we can study the 1950s where he's publishing. But it's useful for us to think, that he, to see that he's using the language of the 19th century fairly uncritically. And certainly what we'd like to do in this course is to think about that language, to think about how that language gets deployed and how the story was used in there fairly uncritically. And therefore, kind of thinking of the same prejudicial kind of way that they were at the time. I don't think he's as bad as the by any I feel like there were some value statements that he said that, that, that seemed to be reinforced, or stereotypes yeah. that seemed to be reinforced that I, that surprised me and it was very interesting. I think, you know, I think my reports with the students were a little bit appalling for that in comparison to what is. Absolutely, and I think when we get to the Higgins events, um, we see a, a really dramatic response to that. He looks at this really quite differently. He arrives at really different conclusions. And I think if we step back from this, and we just kind of look at, if we look at just a peddling view of the Irish, we would think this. But look at how Aikens thinks about the Irish. We would think about something quite different. And I think that's, again, a useful lesson 